Quick tutorial on how to use Avedis, our uh, AI overlay for exam cheating. As usual, you just come to our website and then download it for your platform, some on Windows. Something some of you might've noticed is that every single time you press the download button, you get a different version. So I'm gonna hit download. Then I get something called Container Proxy Invoker. I hit it download again. Then I get Virtualization Mechanism Agent, Load Bridge Provider, Power Loop Allocator, but anyway, I'm just gonna download it. Smart screen is gonna say it doesn't recognize the publisher, but that's just because the code's not signed, just say run anyway. So I accept, leave that in the default location, say create a desktop shortcut and say install. And there we go, this is the app. You wanna be in the Evaders tab. Evaders Lite's gonna be the next video. And as you can see, I don't have any credits, so I'm gonna give myself some credits real quick. If you wanna buy credits, you just have to press on this button right here and then you can buy credits right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and start the overlay. And as you can see now on my screen, nothing happened, but when I switched to the GoPro, now you can actually see what's going on on my screen. So as you probably figured out, the overlay can't be screen recorded, it can't be screenshotted. You can't see it when you hold alt tab, but we'll go over all the invisibility features in a second. For now, I'll just show you how it works. So let's go to lead code for some problems. This overlay isn't actually made for coding interviews, but it's the easiest way to just get a uh, very difficult problems without having to search the internet for engineering problems and things like that. Anyway, let's take this hard lead code problem. I'm gonna bring up my overlay. I'm gonna reduce the opacity a little bit because I feel it's a little bit too dark and I'm gonna toggle the control section like that so it's easy to see what's going on. And let's say I wanna take a screenshot of my entire screen. So I'm gonna press Control, Shift and D at the same time. And then if you check on the left side, you can see the screenshot that I just took. Now, if I take another screenshot, let's say of my other screen. So let's say I hover my mouse on a different screen. Let's say the screen that I'm recording in. And you're gonna see there's a screenshot of OBS Studio. If I do it off my code here on my left screen, you're gonna see it's of my screenshot of my first screen. Basically, whatever screen your mouse is in, if you have multiple monitors, it's gonna take a screenshot of that screen. But let's say you wanna take a screenshot of only a certain part of your screen, not the whole screen. So then what you do is you hover your mouse over a point, like let's say right there, you press Control Shift C, then you're gonna see in the overlay, it now says points marked one of two. And then you hover it over a second place. So let's say right there, press Control Shift C again. And you're gonna see in the bottom here, now it only took a screenshot of that place that I hovered my cursor over. But let's say you wanna remove that, then you press Control Shift Z, which is the hotkey for removing an item from the bundle, and it's gonna remove it. So I removed those as well. So now, as you can see here, we're only left with a screenshot of this lead code problem. I'm gonna increase the opacity a bit so it's easier to see. And I'm gonna press Control, Shift, and Q to get an answer. Now, I'm not gonna make a cut here, but this is the rapid fire thought section. And as you can see, as soon as you press get answer, it's gonna generate some just rapid fire thoughts, something that you can say, read back to an interviewer or something like that. The reason that this is a feature is because I got called in because they suspected me of cheating because my answers got AI detected and they asked me to solve some live problems and that is where I got the idea for this. So this is Gemini 1.5 Pro, which is really smart, but it's really slow. And this is Gemini 1.5 Flash, which is pretty dumb, but it's really fast. So while the long and detailed answer gets generated, you just get some very quick thoughts that you can read back to, well, whoever you're in a live call or meeting with. You can also record your desktop audio and your mic audio. So I'm gonna ask it a question about coding again. I'm gonna say this time, how do you invert a binary tree in Python? I'm gonna press get answer. And then you're gonna see here again, the rapid fire thoughts section is pretty fast. It says that I should take a recursive approach, an iterative, approach we should think think about data structure the base case and testing and then here it gives me a solution to that problem oh yeah i forgot to mention but the app here you're obviously not going to have this open while you're busy so you just say run in background and then it's going to remove it from everything it's also not going to be in the system tray it's basically going to be running in the background processes in task manager anyway let's say you don't really like these sections you don't really want to see what screenshots and whatever you have in your bundle then you can just say Control Alt and L and that's gonna hide it. And if you don't wanna see the rapid fire thoughts, you can just say Control Alt and N, which is gonna hide that as well. Personally, when I'm in an exam, I like to do it like this because I don't need the rapid fire thoughts because it's not a live exam. I just like to see what's in my bundle. But anyway, now for probably the biggest feature, it's not really a thing in coding interviews, but in normal tests, they use AI detectors, which can be pretty detrimental if you don't have a fix for it, which is why we have a paraphrasing feature. So the paraphrasing hotkey on my system is Control Shift and T. It's probably gonna be something different for you, so just double check. But anyway, I'm gonna press Control Shift and T on my keyboard. And that now you see it says paraphrasing. 
and then it's generating another answer that is paraphrased. It still has the same content, but now it won't be picked up by an AI detector. And obviously moving it around to wherever you want. I can move it to any of my other screens without any problems. And then also a nice little guardrail is that you can never move it off your screen completely. As you can see there, I'm holding in the hard key and I'm pressing it, but it's not going past my screen bounds so that you don't accidentally like lose it somehow if you want to bring the main app back from the background let's say you finish with your test then you just press Control shift f7 and it brings it back i'm going to press stop overlay now and show some other features so this is where you can change the hotkeys and a couple other things about the overlay you can change your hotkeys like this so let's say i want to make paraphrase not Control shift t but Control shift p and i just change it to p Come down here and say save changes. It's gonna take a second, then it's gonna save my changes. What that does is it saves it to our database, meaning that if you sign in again on a different device, then your hotkeys are gonna be saved and you're gonna be able to use them again without having to do it all again. So that's where you can change your hotkeys. And this is probably the coolest part. This is the additional context. Here you can basically give a prompt to the AI that you can customize. So the default one is this. I like it a lot. It's very general purpose and it works pretty much everything. But here we also have a preset for coding interviews, sales calls, meetings, productivity. And the best part is you can edit these to make it completely your own as well. You don't have to stick with the presets. You can also reset everything to the default if you accidentally screwed something up. If you want to get an up-to-date list of all the proctors that this covers, you can just see it here at the bottom. And if you want to see all of them, just press see all. It's going to take you to our website and then give you the full list of all the proctors that it covers. And now just for a few features. So as you can see, it is completely invisible to screen recording and everything else like alt tabbing and process manager and things like that but it also can't make your browser lose focus and this is what i mean by that so just scroll down here to still work still undetectable click on the basic checks and then this is a focus test so just a very quick demonstration if i start the focus test and then i click somewhere that isn't this browser window like let's say a different screen you'll see failed window lost focus if i press somewhere like in my taskbar it also loses focus. More and more proctors are using this method to check if your browser window ever loses focus. So to combat that, we made the overlay window click through. So I'm gonna bring up my overlay right here. I'm gonna start the focus test again, and you'll see that when I click on my overlay, it doesn't lose any focus. This is also where you can quickly check that your overlay can't be screen recorded. Just say start screen recording test. Say your entire screen, select screen one. And when I bring up the overlay, as you can see, even if you move it around, and toggle it on and off, it can't be screen recorded. And definitely the most important part of the app is that every single time it has a completely different name. So mine is called Display Host Enforcer. So let's say that you wanna cheat on your exam. All you say is you say start overlay, then say run in background. And if we go look in task manager right now, you'll see that nowhere it says anything about a cheating app running. If I didn't tell you which one it was, you would have absolutely no idea since it uses that default icon and a generic system sounding name. And there it is, display host enforcer. Pretty much just blends in with everything else. Anyway, credits are pretty cheap for this. It starts at $10, then it's $20, then it's $50. A lot of my friends that use this say they use about 50 credits in one semester. If you'd like to see all the proctors that Evadus covers, you can see them right here in the compatibility section of the website. So as you can see responders here only has an e plus next to it which means you can only cheat it using evadus plus the virtual machine but honor lock and proctorio have evadus plus evadus and evadus light meaning you can cheat it using anything this list doesn't have all the proctors a general rule of thumb to know if our app is undetectable for your proctoring software if it's a lockdown tool like responders or safe exam browser you're gonna have to use evadus plus but if it's just a normal browser extension or a native app like Onalock, Proctorio, Examplify, Examsoft, then you can cheat it using anything you want. 